So we're less than a week away from WrestleMania 33, the biggest show of the year. And I know I'm not the only one that's not exactly giggly tits about the possibility of what could come this Sunday. I know that to be the case. But with that said, the show is still coming and there is still that eternal hope and optimism that indeed the WWE can pull a rabbit out of their hat, that they can make something out of what seems to be shaping up to be potentially a whole lot of nothing. Now, for years when it came to WrestleMania, one of the big attractions, arguably the biggest attraction every year, was The Undertaker and who The Undertaker would face at WrestleMania, especially when the streak was on the line. Now that the streak was ended back at WrestleMania 30, The Undertaker is an attraction still for WrestleMania, there is no question about it, but it's not quite the same. It just doesn't feel the same. It's just now he wrestles against somebody and it doesn't have the same significance and purpose of all of his matches from the past two plus decades. Now with that said, for my money, The Undertaker is the be all end all. The Undertaker is the GOAT of WWE. You know, the only person I think that you could really put into that argument is maybe Hogan, maybe Vince, and that's it. No offense to Bruno in his time, but that was a regional territory, an entirely different era. In terms of the modern era of the WWF slash WWE, to me, in terms of long, consistent, sustained run of excellence, relevance through multiple different generations, the ability to reinvent himself, uh, evolve, and still maintain his status as a top guy, um, I think The Undertaker is the GOAT of WWE. And with that said, when it comes to WrestleMania, to me, I look at WrestleMania this way involving The Undertaker. Now, it especially held true when the streak was still intact, was that to me that was the real main event of WrestleMania most years. Because people win and lose titles at the biggest show of the year all the time. Nobody ever beat The Undertaker. And even with that said to this day, only one person, Brock Lesnar, back in 2014 at WrestleMania 30, has ever beaten The Undertaker at WrestleMania. So to me, being in that spotlight with him, that is the marquee match still. Even if it doesn't quite feel the same, even though it doesn't have the same luster because of the loss of the streak, facing The Undertaker at WrestleMania is still a big, big deal. It's still a huge deal, a massive deal. And as I used to argue for years with him and the streak still being intact, I feel especially now, when you look ahead to WrestleMania 33, when you look at the card, when you look at the place and moment in time in The Undertaker's career, I really feel like he should be the one to close this show. He should be the main event of WrestleMania 33. And let me explain a few reasons why. Number one, what else can really main event? What? Shane McMahon, AJ Styles, please. Randy Orton versus Bray Wyatt for the title. That's more likely to open the show. That most certainly as hell has no business closing a WrestleMania. And I think everybody acknowledges that. Triple H and Seth Rollins. That feels like one of those mid-card type of grudge matches at WrestleMania that a good WrestleMania show needs. But again, not WrestleMania main event worthy. And even the universal title match between Brock Lesnar and Bill Goldberg. While there's history there, while there's story there, and it involves your marquee title, you think about Goldberg and you think about Lesnar, you've seen this match before. Does this really merit that top spot? Especially knowing, again, that the main event is that last impression of the show. Ultimately, a lot of times, the most important impression of the show do you really want to close with that? On top of that, when you look at it, at least Undertaker's match at WrestleMania involves a full-time future top guy, unlike Brock Lesnar and Goldberg. And you can sit there and say, well, Lesnar's going to be around for a little bit longer, but how long is that? Another year? Two? Three? And even then, it's in a part-time limited capacity. How much impact and return do you really get from investing that much in Brock Lesnar? Furthermore, when you look at it, Roman Reigns has main evented the last two WrestleManias. And now you're in a position where if he's going to be that dude, like it or not, if he's going to be that face of the company, then he is the type of guy that should be in that type of position where he is main eventing WrestleMania. And look, at the end of the day, again, whether you like it or not, I would much rather see a Roman Reigns, who's going to be around long term, be the main event of the biggest show of the year than as opposed to a Goldberg or a Brock Lesnar. 
especially when I look at the fact that Undertaker and Roman Reigns as a match has never happened before. So it has more special attraction feel to it in theory, in part. It doesn't necessarily have the overall name power of a Lesnar and a Goldberg, but in terms of that special attraction, in terms of feeling unique, feeling different, being different, it is one of those matches on this card that feels like that. And again, if you were trying to make Reigns one of the standard bearers of this company for the next decade plus, which it could potentially be, then it makes much more sense for him to be the guy closing out the show as opposed to a Lesnar and a Goldberg. On top of that, we're talking about The Undertaker. We're talking about the GOAT of WWE. The real Mr. WrestleMania. He's earned it. You know, I understand the whole thought process behind the young guys, the future, the future. But frankly, who gives a shit about the future because the present stinks anyways? Why not try to make the present as good as it possibly can be? Furthermore, on top of that, talk about how The Undertaker has earned it. You're going back to a guy who had his first WrestleMania match at WrestleMania 7 against the recently deceased Superfly Jimmy Snuka. And he's been there. He's been the bedrock. He's been the pillar. He's been the constant. Where other guys like The Rock leave to go do movies. Where other guys like Austin pick up their ball and go home. Guys like Foley retire. Triple H evolves into a, a behind-the-scenes guy that wrestles some of the time. To all these guys, the Shawn Michaels who retires, to all those guys that like Hogan and such that left and went to WCW and them crawling back years later with their tail between their legs, The Undertaker was the bedrock. He was the constant. He was the franchise. He was the dude that you could count on, that you could rely upon. So in my opinion, if an Undertaker wrestles at a WrestleMania, knowing that you've got a limited window for the number that he can actually wrestle in the future anyways... He's earned that spot. He deserves that spot that if the match is worthy of it, he should be the guy that goes on last. He should be the main event because at the end of the day, there is no bigger star in that company at this present time, even in his one match a year capacity, than The Undertaker. And typically, your biggest star should be the one that's closing out the show. And easily beyond question, in terms of when you look at the WWE roster now, part-time, full-time, doesn't effing matter. The Undertaker is the big dog. It is still his yard. And as a result, he deserves to be that guy in that spot. Again, he is the real Mr. WrestleMania. All these people with their Shawn Michaels propaganda, you could pound it up for your fucking ass. You know, from a kayfabe standpoint, you talk about Undertaker who went 21-0 and at WrestleMania before he finally lost. On top of that, furthermore, the fact that this is going to be, what, his 25th WrestleMania match? 25th? He's main evented. He's had some marquee matches. He's had some spectacular matches. He is the real Mr. WrestleMania. Shawn Michaels isn't even in second class. That's Hogan. To sit there and say that Shawn Michaels is Mr. WrestleMania over The Undertaker is just dumb shit, period. Again, as I've mentioned, this dude is the GOAT of WWE. And on top of that, again... In all of these years going spanning two and a half plus decades, only one person, a former, mind you, amateur NCAA wrestling heavyweight champion, UFC champion, multiple time WWE champion, has ever been able to beat The Undertaker at WrestleMania. Only one. Even with the diminished impact of The Undertaker not having the streak attached to him at WrestleMania. There is still only one person in the history of WrestleMania that has ever beaten The Undertaker. It is a much bigger deal to wrestle The Undertaker than wrestle for one of the two world titles. There are two world titles that mean dick. There is one Undertaker that in theory you could argue means everything. And on top of all of that, another thing that's very important here, who do you trust more? Do you trust Brock Lesnar and Goldberg to close out this show? Do you trust those two to deliver a main event worthy WrestleMania match? Do you trust these guys who, going off of previous history, we've got WrestleMania 20, where they threw Austin in there as the guest referee and it's one of the worst WrestleMania matches of all time, a Survivor Series match that lasted, what, a minute and 26 seconds, a brief encounter at the Royal Rumble, where, again, they kept it short and sweet with Goldberg, which is the key to success with that dude, believe me. You're going to put these two in a spot where they could be potentially having to send the people home happy. This is going to be your go-home, last thing you remember moment? Do you trust those two, or do you trust The Undertaker? 
who has been in that spot before multiple times, who has delivered multiple times. At the end of the day, when I look at that roster, I don't care what physical shape he is in. I don't care about this. I don't care about the opponent. I don't care about that. At the end of the day, there's a trust factor that's there. And if I'm going to trust anybody to bring home that show, I'm going to trust the GOAT of WWE. I'm going to trust The Undertaker over anybody else. And on top of that, he's got a dude with him in Roman Reigns that in a lot of ways could be a perfect counterbalance for him in the ring. And these guys could go out there and really potentially put on a decent show. But even if they don't, you've got the nostalgia of it being the fucking Undertaker. You've got the mystique and the aura of it being the Undertaker. I trust him in the main event over anybody else. And then to top it all off, you're getting a lot of buzz. And it's been that way for recent years. Almost kind of like the talk of if and when an Impact Wrestling is going to die finally. But with The Undertaker, it's, is this his last WrestleMania? Are you getting to that point now he's, what, 52 years old? There's going to be a last one at some point, and this could potentially be it. If this is indeed his last WrestleMania, what better way to send him out than to have him close the show? It's like the ridiculousness of WrestleMania 24, where granted, The Undertaker and Edge main evented that show, and they kind of saved that show to me. It was Ric Flair and Shawn Michaels that stole the show. It was Ric Flair's last match, and it was in the fucking mid-card. And honestly, until you got to the main event, nothing else could follow. Do you want to run that risk again of putting potentially Undertaker's retirement match buried in the mid-card of the freaking show? I don't think so. And on top of that, if Shawn Michaels could get the type of treatment that he got with the ending of the main event of WrestleMania 26, wouldn't Undertaker deserve that and so much more? And on top of all of that, especially if it really gets out there that this is Undertaker's last match, what the fuck is going to be able to follow this? The answer is nothing. I don't care if people are making sphincter dives into flaming shards of ass cracks of glass and thumbtacks of shit. Nothing is going to be able to follow up The Undertaker in his last match at WrestleMania. So I implore the WWE, I strongly encourage the WWE, that if all sentiments involved sit there and suggest to you that this is his last dance, his last ride, his last trip in his yard, you better have him damn close the show. Because if you don't, it's going to ruin your show. I promise you. Oftentimes with WrestleMania, the things that we remember are the way the show closes. So why not close it at least if it's going to be his last ride with having this be this ultimate tribute to the legacy and the greatness of the GOAT of WWE, The Undertaker. If anybody deserves to sit there after the bell tolls and the match is over to get a 5, 10, 15 minute standing ovation in the middle of that ring, and that's how you close out WrestleMania, it's The Undertaker. I'm talking about you have people come out. We do all this crap sometimes where people come out from the back and they applaud. That's what the fuck everybody involved should be doing. This should be like an ode to licking Undertaker's ass for 10 or 15 minutes because, again, this dude has deserved it. And on top of all of that, if you actually follow through with having him lose to Roman Reigns on Sunday... All of the anger that's going to be there. All of the frustration and flummoxing of the fans that there will be. And the venting and the bitching and the moaning and the pissing. Do you really want that to happen in the middle of the freaking show to where everybody is crapping on the remainder of the show? Especially if you know that you've got Lesnar versus Goldberg for the Universal title closing out the damn thing. No. If you're going to go that path, then you have to main event it because you have to give Reigns that big spot in the main event and then you can still circle the wagons and come back to the focus and the emphasis being on The Undertaker because that's the only way you can save this shit from being a complete abortion and total fucking disaster. Now granted maybe this whole video is one big mark fest for me with The Undertaker but I don't give a shit. The dudes earned it. The dudes deserved it. And if anybody deserves this spotlight one more time, it's The Undertaker. I implore the WWE to do the right thing, make the right call, and have Taker close out this show. 
Because I promise you, if you don't, nothing, nothing is going to be able to follow it.